Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at talking about surfaces and things in three-dimensional space and we want to just start familiarizing ourselves with functions that are in three-dimensional space. So a function in three-dimensional space basically takes a point in the xy plane and maps it to a z coordinate. For example, a function like this, this would be the function z equals x squared over 2 minus y squared over 2. This function is a saddle, so you might recognize this as a quadric surface. This is a saddle. So this function, you see parabolic traces in the y direction, so as y is a constant, you see these traces of parabolas. And if x is a constant, you see these traces of negative parabolas. As you look from the x-axis, you see parabolas opening down. As you look from the y-axis, the traces are parabolas. They're opening up. So if y is a constant, you would see z equals x squared over 2 minus a constant. That would be a parabola that's opening up, but maybe shifted down as you move along the y-direction. Same thing in the x-direction. The parabolas are opening down, but shifted up. All right, so that's a surface. Now, a contour is just whenever you set z equal to a constant. So a contour would be any particular line when z is equal to a constant. So if we look at the, at the contours of this, we see at z equals 0, we just get two intersecting lines. If z were equal to 0, we would have 0 equals x squared minus y squared. That's just two intersecting lines. And then as we get different z values, we get different hyperbolas. So the hyperbolas above z equals 0 are opening this way. So we can see that up here. The, the hyperbolas above z equals 0. So any constant z greater than 0 gives you hyperbolas up here. Any constant below z equals 0 gives you hyperbolas this way. So the, in this case, the colors are helpful, and they indicate the low spots on the surface. So the low spots are down here with the red. So if we rotate this around, we see the low spots are over here with the red, and the high spots are up here with the blue. And the green is just kind of an intermediate color here, so yellow is lower than green, green is lower than blue, and blue is lower than purple. So this is a good idea of what contour plots can do for us. So if you just look at this in a 2D direction, you would see something like this. So for y going this way, x going this way, you would see these contour lines. Now let's look at a different surface here. Right? This surface is called a paraboloid. It's the equation z equals x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9. And that is an elliptic paraboloid because as you see, like as z traces, z equals a constant, you'll see, different per, you'll see different ellipses. Now if x is a constant, you see parabolas opening up. And if y is a constant, you see parabolas opening up. They're just different shapes, which makes it an elliptic paraboloid because these traces for z are ellipses. And let's look at possibly incorporating those different traces. So I'm going to plug in different values of z here, and let's see, watch what happens. As we plug in, like, say, z equals 1, we start out right there. As we go down, z equals smaller and larger numbers. We move up and down the paraboloid, so we get different ellipses or different traces as we plug in different values of z, get different size ellipses that are on the surface of this paraboloid. Now, a, a contour plot just takes all of these traces and plots them on the same graph, basically. So if we do that for this paraboloid, we'll see this contour plot right here. So you see all these contours, and we can see that they're starting out at green and going up to blue, which means that the lower points are down here and the higher points are up here. So if we look at the contour plot from above, we would see blue on the outside and green on the inside, and that means this low spot on this contour plot, if we throw this in the xy direction, this is x, this is y, the low spot's down here, and the high spots are on the edge. So that is how we use a contour plot for this surface. So let's just look at a few more cool surfaces just to get an idea of what this is a standard example you'll see from any any software like I think this is the standard MATLAB um, function that they have in their software logo um, it's just the function z equals 5xy e to the neg e to the negative and then you would have parentheses like x squared plus y squared 
So this is just a standard MATLAB like surface logo. And if we throw the contours on top of that, it looks pretty cool. So if we just look at the contours this way, it's kind of hard to tell the up the low spots and the high spots. So we zoom in a little bit, we see, okay, the low spots are here with the orange and the red. The high spots are over here with the blue. If we rotate that around, we see, oh yeah, those are nice, you know, peaks and valleys basically for the surface. So this is a cool surface. Z equals 5xy times exponential of negative x squared minus y squared basically. This is a cool surface to look at. We look at this surface. This is another cool surface to check out. This is a surface z equals 2 cosine of x squared plus y squared. So this is just oscillating with different values of uh, x and y. Basically, x squared plus y squared is equal to some constant. Then we take the cosine of that value. So basically, we'll see circle traces whenever we plug in z equals a constant. We see circles, basically. And then... Uh, cosine oscillates between 1 and negative 1, so this z value, the max z value is 1, the lowest z value is negative 1. And if we throw the contours on top of that surface, it looks pretty cool as well. Um, we see there's something important to note here, is that in the contour plot, if we zoom out a little bit, we'll see that the contours are more tightly packed where the surface is changing a lot, and then it's not very tightly packed where the surface is kind of just flat or stagnant. So the surface doesn't change at the top of this um, surf the this peak right here. The surface isn't changing very much. So the contours are not like super close together. But as you move down, the surface is decreasing rapidly. And then you get to that valley. There's not much going on. And then you get to this peak. It's starting to come up again. So the surface is changing. So the contours are more tightly packed around the places where you have lots of change in your function. And that'll be super important when we talk about rates of change of these types of functions. But for now, I mean, this is just to get an idea of what contour lines look like for different surfaces, etc. So that's cool stuff. That's a cool surface. Um, this is what we call a hyperboloid of one sheet. This would be something like uh, x squared plus y squared plus minus z squared equals 2 or something like that. So you'd have this uh, hyperboloid of one sheet. It looks like a smokestack or um, some people say like an hourglass, but uh, it could be uh, it could be anything as far as real life goes. But this is uh, the contours on top of it. So this is a little strange, actually. To plot these contours in 2D, you really couldn't do that because you have these contours from the top part overlapping with these contours from the bottom part. So you really want to plot like the top surface and then the bottom surface separately. So these are actually two different surfaces on top of each other because you have a z squared in that equation. So in that equation, um, z isn't explicitly a function of x, it's kind of implicitly a function of x and y. So you have to say z equals some positive square root and z equals some negative square root. But uh, yeah, so this would be a cool surface to look at. So the contours for the top would look like this, and that would say, okay, this outer edge is higher than the middle because it's blue going down to green. And if we look at the contours from the bottom, we say, oh, okay, now it's lower on the edge and higher in the middle. So it's a pretty cool surface, a hyperboloid of one sheet. It's a pretty standard uh, uh, quadric surface that you'll see. This is an interesting surface. It's just the surface z equals square root of x times y. So as x and y get larger, which is you know kind of coming out at us here, as uh, x and y get larger, then z gets larger as well. And if we look at it from the x direction, z equals square root of x would look like this. And then z equals square root of y. Well, y is positive this way, it would look like this, and then z equals square root of xy. 45 degree angle right there would be the highest point. So let's throw the contours on top of this. And we see a cool surface here. It's just these contours in the xy direction. You see kind of like hyperbolas actually for different values of z. But uh, yeah, that would be the contour plot. And we say, okay, it's higher up here, it's lower where the green is, higher where the blue is. It's cool, cool surface. But yeah, so that's that's pretty much all we got. Um, if there are any questions, just post in the comments below. Um, I'll be sure to answer any questions that you have. So uh, thanks for checking it out, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, video.